Okay, today is the 24th of June 2017, and I'd like to look at the last part of Lisa's horoscope spread that, we, that we've been looking at in the last couple of days, because she was also interested in partnerships. And this it's ruled by the seventh house, so um, you probably, only because people are people and they want to know about partnerships and boyfriends and girlfriends and relationships, if, if you're going to do a horoscope spread, people are probably going to want to know about partnerships and what's happening with other people. So it might be useful for you to get to, to have an idea about how this can be approached, how this can be understood. So th the first house is the self and opposite the seventh house is everybody else, right? Because it's other people. But it can be, in particular, the marriage partner or the boyfriend, girlfriend. It's a significant other person that you're dealing with. So if somebody wants to know about partnerships, about relationships, about romance, you look to the card in the seventh house. And sometimes there's one answer, or the card in the seventh house describes one individual. But it can also tell you about more than one person. Because if you think of it, you, you can, somebody can be, you, you can meet somebody who, who is um, rich, generous, and likes to be in control. But you can also meet somebody who's rich and other characteristics. Somebody who is also generous, but doesn't have much money and somebody who likes to be in control and doesn't want anybody to have any kind of control in any way. So you can have one individual who has all three characteristics or you can have, you can meet and be interested in or be or have these other people, three other people interested in you. So when it comes to the seventh house, we can want a single answer, but sometimes we get more there's more than one person described although one individual can have multiple characteristics. So with that in mind, we turn the card and what Lisa got was the Three of Pentacles upside down. It was reversed. And if we remember a horoscope spread, it covers a certain period of time. So it does. If, if you get the devil in the seventh house, it doesn't mean that everybody you meet is always going to try and control you and trap you. It means that... Um, now and for let's say a few months unless you've specified a year or something like that but for a period into the future um you're going to be dealing with people who want to control you let's say it doesn't mean that you're always going to have problems with people like that but there's something to learn about those or some kind of lesson for you or the questioner um about controlling other people and how they go about it or maybe manipulating other people and how they do it and why it's a good idea or why it's a bad idea so you're learning certain things about let's say manipulation if you get the seventh if you get the devil in the seventh house whereas if you get the sun it's much more uplifting and positive and you meet people who are interesting and sociable and want to make the most out of life so you get a very different type of individual if you have the sun in the seventh house than if you have the devil. And that's that can be a consideration as well. What type of people, what type of individual are you attracting into your life at the moment or over the next few months? And Lisa's got the three of pentacles upside down. So we can use the card there to describe the types of other people who find her interesting or that she finds interesting and um, uh, so you would look at maybe a, a professional individual or a counsellor, an advisor um, only because we've got the person on the, the bench and then you've got the two people with the plan. Um, so uh, you, you can come up with uh, descriptions of the kind of, of person she would be interested in. But at the same time, um, I'm thinking we can use it to describe Lisa's experience of partnerships for the next few months. And it's a bit like um, the person 
in in the the picture for the Day of Pentecost, we've got somebody with a plan, but the card is upside down, so it can mean that Lisa should forget about having a plan. You know, because you you can, if if you've got a plan and you've got an idea in your head of how things ought to go or how things are going to go, then if somebody or some situation doesn't quite meet the conditions of the plan, you're going to reject them, even though maybe they were right for you. So with, with the Three of Pentacles reversed in mind, when Lisa thinks about partnerships, she's going to be better off if she doesn't have a plan for what she's looking for, what she wants. And this can go back to the full reverse in the 12th house that we looked at a few days ago. It's a bit like if she can, if she relaxes and sees what happens and what develops and doesn't try to control it and doesn't want it to um, conform to her desires and her expectations, if she can relax and let it happen, then relationships are going to be an awful lot better. Because we have to remember, she, she, the partnerships are represented by the three of, cup, uh, three of coins reversed, which is the card of the craftsman, but it's upside down. So maybe Lisa doesn't know as much about relationships as she thinks she does. Maybe she's got uh, empty areas in her understanding. And if she goes into a relationship thinking to herself, okay, there's certain things I don't know. Let's see what happens. She's going to get on an awful lot better than if she goes into that same relationship thinking, I know what's going on. If she can, if she can um, accept that she's maybe not as expert as she maybe thinks or would like to think she is, she's going to get have have better relationships because we have to remember she's represented by the Queen of Swords reversed. So when she or if she is critical or overly controlling in relationships and overly controlling generally, it's going to go badly or it's not going to, it's not going to flow, we can say, or she's going to introduce tension and stress and difficulty. And there's no real need for it. Um, okay, so there's that. So we can look at the seventh house to get an idea of the of partnerships for the questioner at this time. And it can be one or more people. It doesn't have to be just one. Although it can, if somebody wants to know about the husband or wife, then there's probably just one husband or one wife that you're dealing with. So the card in the seventh house would describe that individual. But the other thing you can do is, if you remember, I think somewhere I mentioned that you can look at any house from the point of view of any other house. So the first is the self, the second is the value sense, the third is a communication, and the fourth is a final outcome. So we can look at Lisa's seventh house as number one. So the eighth would be two, the ninth would be three, the tenth would be the fourth. So Lisa's tenth house, which contains the ace of cups upright, is the fourth from the seventh. It's the final outcome of partnerships or the final outcome of current and short-term future partnerships. So even though the partnerships generally are represented by the three of pentacles upside down, which we can say is an obstacle, the final outcome is the ace of cups, which is a new romance, a new beginning, a new romantic involvement. And so if Lisa goes into the relationship with no, or goes into meeting people with no plan, but wanting to, to, learn what she can learn about relationships because that's going to teach her about her. And if she can be relaxed, then she meets somebody because the Ace of Cups is the fourth from the seventh. It's the final outcome of partnerships. 
So with a horoscope spread, you can give like straight answers to people about yes or no, and this is going to happen or that's going to happen, or watch out for this type of individual, um, pay attention that you don't get involved in this kind of condition or this kind of situation. And you've got this awkwardness, so deal, deal with it this way, and it's not going to be as bad, and you'll learn something from it. So you, you can give answers like that, but you can also then, by considering the other cards in, and their relationship to that first house, you can give more detail. So we can sort of project into the future a bit and get an idea of how things are going to turn out. And with that in mind, if we take the 10th, because yesterday, I think it was, um, we, we considered a new business or a new career for Lisa because the Ace of Cups was there. She, she can look after people and care for them. But because it was an Ace, it can be time. Now, is, now can be a good time to make a new start. So if we take the 10th house as the first, the 11th is the second, the 12th is the third, and the first is the fourth. Right, so the first house where we, Lisa has the Queen of Swords reversed is the final outcome of the 10th, which is the new business or the new career. So with the Queen of Swords reversed, it doesn't mean it's going to have a bad outcome, but it means it's reminding her or pointing out, um, don't go overboard. When, when, she's, when she's got the new project in place, and she's working at the new job or the new career or or setting things up for a new possibility. With the Queen Reverse and the final outcome, don't take on too much in the beginning. Don't overdo it or don't think, I can do everything. So if she thinks I can do everything, she's going to get into trouble because the Queen, I can do everything as the Queen, but it's upside down. So it's not going to, she's going to discover that she can't do everything. So when she's in the early stages of the new career, make sure that, or pay attention to what she's actually doing and how much work she's taking on so that she doesn't spread herself too thin. So that she, so she has to learn to say no with the Queen reversed and it's sword, so understand that she can't do everything. She can ultimately do everything, but not on her own and not at the beginning. So don't get into trouble by taking on too much or assuming that um, you will be able to get it all together. You, She's better off, or the Queen of Swords reverse as the fourth from the 10th can be a warning to her to um, take it easy in the early stages and maybe understand that she's just at the beginning of something. So she hasn't got the experience yet. And even though she's got experience in certain areas of life, um, she's going to need to develop new understanding when it comes to this new career. Okay, that's what I wanted to say. On, just to show you how you can... Um, get more detail from one card by considering other cards and the connection with it. At the same time, it's, it's not that easy to do and you need a certain amount of practice and a certain amount of experience and then you'll find that it becomes easier because you can get information overload. You can just look and it just becomes overwhelming and you get way too much going on. If you try to deal with all 12 houses at the same time. So my suggestion is that in the beginning, you do what Lisa did, which is she chose, um, uh, I think, six houses. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, she looked at herself and her value, and then the three for income and service and career, and then partnerships, and then her karma. And that that's, she sort of limited herself to those few areas. And that, I think, worked quite well. Um, so with a horoscope spread, because it's so complete, um, it's going to be more manageable and more doable if you limit yourself in the beginning and choose, let's say, three or four houses and, and, and become comfortable with cards in those houses and what you would do with it or what you do with them and what it all means and how it fits together. 
And then once you, if you enjoy that, then continue on and maybe uh, turn more, turn the card in a bigger number of houses and see what you get from that. So it's a good spread, but it's not easy. And it takes time to get the hang of it, but it's worthwhile in the long run. Okay, that's it for the moment. I'll talk to you tomorrow about something. Okay, bye-bye.